G waiting on O. Well, thanks for joining us. We're uh, we're on we're the Woodsman Perspective podcast, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in. And if, if you've never listened before, if you're new, you know we're gonna talk habitat, land, hunting, and uh, we're gonna do it from a perspective of guys that have done it. Uh, why hadn't not? they listen? I mean, everybody listens. Just <laughs> the management advantage, right? Come on, now. Surely they have. But uh, <clears throat> look, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk archery. We're gonna talk bow hunting on this episode, and and we we're regionally, you know, and a lot of things we do have a sort of a regional flavor, right? And, and that's mm-hmm. that's intentional too. Of course, uh, Chris is the only one that really knows any celebrities, but <laughs> <laughs> name but, dropping. That's right. You got you got to do it. Every you got a name while, drop. Right? Yeah. yeah. But look, we got Slade Fancher in here. Slade has a lifetime of 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 hunting and outdoor, but but really with emphasis, I think safe to say on bow hunting. And for years, Slade, I mean, literally ran a bow shop. Yep, 15, and, and 16 years. Well, for made a living at it for all, almost 16 years. 12 years awesome. with Sports Center there in Starfield, and three years with Owens Outfitters. Yeah, yeah. I told a lot of people that Slade Fancher was sold the only person a lot I would of, let work on my boat. He sold a lot of bows to a lot of our buddies. Yep. Well, and I and, mean, and I sold a lot of bows because of guys like y'all. You know, send them in. Uh, yeah. But you was yeah, good at it too. Word you, of mouth. It, people don't know uh, you. You're technical about stuff. You want it right. You know, I'm. I'm more of a throw it in the back seat kind of <laughs> yeah. guy. Well, I, but, but, uh, which which probably goes why he doesn't bow hunt a whole lot. Right, you know, right. It's, it's there, there's a lot. So so bow hunters, I have bow hunted for a long time, and and there were several years where, you know, my deer hunting was strictly bow. I'd bow hunt all year. I carried all year, and so it's right. something that, as my daughter got older, I started my hunting changed more towards hunting with her. I backed off of that some because you just absolutely have to put the mm-hmm. time in and. And when I was really doing a lot, I would shoot, shot some competitive, shot some 3D, and, and I just, I loved it. And it's one of those things that it, it's, we, with archery, it, it's like a few other sports in that you can get as. It was a following. Yeah, you can get as sure. complicated and complex with it, or you can enjoy it in that simplest yeah. form, you know, and, and, and bow hunters are from one end of that spectrum to the other. Well, you look at it now. <laughs> And, and bow hunting, you look at TV shows, you mm-hmm. know, Lee and Tiffany. That's right. All, you know, primos. Most of those guys now, they're not toting a big gun. No, they're, it's, they're, it's, it's all they're, archery. They're, they're, they're archery, know, and, they're, and they're killing these huge deer with a bow. And, yeah. and we were talking before we got on the air. Let me tell you something. And y'all all know this because y'all are all hunters. But the guy that bow hunts and is good at it, he gets the first shot. At most of the big deer. At the dumb deer. Before they ever. <laughs> yeah, those bachelor groups. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Where so you just, see one, it might be five. Right. Yeah, so, so uh, I kind of wanted to touch on maybe the whole evolution of that. There, there, you know, bow hunting, you know, there are some spe- specific things I hope we can hit on, some technical things mm-hmm. uh, specific to setups and things, some tips somebody might could pick up. But, you tell know, me a little we're, we're storytellers. We're tell me a little history on, on right. how you got started with your dad. And First of all, I don't, cool. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I should have brought my bow. Like, I, I feel like I need to be holding the bow. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it looked I'm, better for, for why, sales, why I'm you know? sitting here talking. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm 50. I'll be 50 in July. Chris and I played against each other playing baseball back in high school he was at new hope i was at i i was at Louisville, and you know it's funny our our, our paths never did really cross uh, again until until i got involved in the right. in the outdoor industry right. and then we got some mutual friends but my dad uh a lot of you may not know dad and i are going to start this is going to be our 29th year going out west elk hunting together i started awesome. dad started going in 1981 my, my dates may may be a little wrong but 1981 i started going with him in 1996 yeah, no, no, nobody facts check fact <laughs> yeah <We're> so <laughs> and i mean we have been going i've been going with him every year since 1996 now one of those years we went to alaska together uh but dad was a pharmacist by trade uh he's also been a baptist preacher for 30 some odd years and he had a little pharmacy down in knoxpater mississippi uh and he was the pse bow dealer wow out of that drugstore i mean that's PSE shipped him bows. Yeah, I mean, there, he was know, the first bow shop. There were a lot shop. of small awesome. shop bow dealers through the yeah, years. I remember no in Amory, I think it was a finance company. And yep. They were they, they were had, the yep, Matthews yep, dealer around yep, here for a long yep, time. Same That's, thing. So uh, from a f- young age, 
uh, I was just always tinkering on bows and arrows, working on yeah. bows and fletching arrows and and you know I, I I I told Brent and we'll we'll talk about this during the podcast. Contrary to popular belief, archery is really dying. It's sad to me. Uh, you, you know whether people don't have time or whatever it is. But back in We're those all about days, convenience now. Yeah, like. and I and mean, archery is you know, not convenient. Everybody wants to do this. Yeah. Archery is not convenient. This. No, uh-uh. I mean, you have to practice. And I, I, I remember at a at a young age, we lived on Met Street there in Louisville, and 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 I, I mean, so some of these people are not living in, anymore. But my dad, Mr. Rick Fusell, Mr. Kim Webb, Dr. Mike Ard. Uh, uh, I, I can just remember, and they all come to our house and shot bows. Yeah. Dad had three uh, square hay bales down there, and they were shooting them four wheel PSE bows, right? Shooting with fingers off a cushion plunger, you know. Wow. I got Pen, pendulum sights, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, had them hanging sights. metal yeah. sights, yeah. Uh, and you know, people used to come in the bow shop all the time, and 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 I would overdraws. Yeah, overdraws was big. You yeah. know, especially once you got into PSC, they had the Mach fives and the Mach sixes, right. and you'd shoot five or six inches of, of of overdraw. But these young guys would come in the store, and they would be setting up a, a bow, and I'd say, "Hey, put that screw in the cushion plunger hole," and they'd look at me like, "What's the cushion plunger hole?" Well, it's the that hole on the riser, guys, where your rest mounts to. Used to be a little deal there called a cushion plunger. I think you know, hold it up. I mean, yeah. it, they're, they're, and, and the way you tuned that arrow, you screwed that screw and it pushed that cushion plunger out or pushed that, push that cu- cushion plunger in. Yeah. And then you slid your knock. Wasn't no loops. God, yep. look, at, look at things now. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, we shot yep. with knocks and you'd yep. loosen that knock, yep. move crimp, it up and down the string, and knock. you'd draw back, boom, you'd watch that arrow, you know? Yeah. And, and it's just. Uh, it's evolved a lot. Like, so much. Like nothing so else much. to me in, in hunting. If you look at bows, you take just a snapshot of 25 or 30 years. Yep. And you look at the equipment, the evolution of the equipment, and it's just, it's it crazy so how much, much it's changed. Yep. You know? And, you know, and for the better, but Brent and I were also talking about earlier, from from where bows were when we started, and then I can go back to my, 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 my dad, Mr. Curtis Pounds, that lived on Highway 9, right. he would stop there between McCool, Mississippi, and Oxford because he was going to school there, stop at Mr. Curtis Pounds, and he was making long bows and recurves. But the cool thing about archery, it don't matter if you're shooting a recurve, it don't matter if you're shooting a crossbow, a compound, a newer a bow, crossbow. Yeah, we'll get we'll yeah. circle back to yeah. that. That's right. It's all about where you put that arrow. Yeah, yeah. and I and asked, it don't matter what you shoot. Yeah, and I asked y'all. I asked. We was in there eating just a while ago, and I asked Slate. I said, Slate, are you against a crossbow? You said, Chris, Absolutely just because it's not. got a stock and a trigger, don't, don't make mean it a it's rifle. a gun. That's, that's right. right, and that's cool because my my early beginnings on a bow. You know, we were hunting, hunting on our own. Got them old Amaker deer stands, old tree lounges. So we were yeah. trying to evolve in. That's Remember the old tree lounge commercials with yeah, the man and his man wife? Man and his wife. We talked about that. <laughs> Wasn't that great? Uh, she could knock them down. She boy. could kill them. <laughs> Big deer. Everglades. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the thing was, was, you know, one thing about bow hunting that I always love, I still love to this day. I don't do a lot of it because in the timber business, our driest time, of year. time is October. That's right. That's right. First of November because it's the driest time mm-hmm. of year. So. Guess what? We don't make time to do it. To go and, do it. And, That's and, right. And, and this goes back to what you was talking about. But I can remember when we were high schoolish, getting into bow hunting, and the first bow I put on level, I was telling you about, I was shooting an old Nada Eagle, had them old wings, that thing go off at something like, like a, slam like a car out hood. Six. Yeah, <laughs> pow! You know, and, and yeah. it had all these moving parts, and, and uh, so I, I, I worked put, on a bunch of them too. Oh, People yeah. still shoot them. People both fish them. And, and those yeah. things would fly. I mean, yeah. they were they were awkward. I mean, they both wings broke down. Mm-hmm. They looked like something off of Top Gun. But, <laughs> um, it, but as far as you're hunting in the woods, you were up a climbing tree stand, or a, you know, yeah. we didn't hunt out of a, a, a. I didn't hunt out of a lean to stand with no a you hunt out a climber climber you didn't have lock ons yeah. guess what else you had to know to do learn to read sign yes yeah. find where the deer was yeah. feeding the acres I mean, where acres they was coming from I mean, that, that was yeah a big, but to see a deer 
and and my girls are spoiled, probably like your kids. Oh, no doubt. Sit on Shooting green houses. fields, and here comes twenty yeah. of them out in the field. Hey, Daddy, what about this? And yeah. shoot this. I got a picture of this one. Yeah, you but didn't know something back then. You didn't know. It. No, it was a surprise, but it was something to it sitting up there, full foliage, and seeing them legs coming. Yeah, you know them. what I'm talking about. Hear them. Yep. Yeah, so and that it's goes a, to the, it's a cool the yeah. thing it's about, and I've never forgotten that. Child. goes to one of the advantages of, of bow hunting. That's one of the things that I know for me, and probably a lot of people led you to bow hunting was that earlier opportunity that you got more season than the guy that didn't bow. Yep. Hunt. Well, okay. October first, that investment of time used and to that, a lot that more than you get now because the state's yeah. taking it away from us. Basically, yeah, that's right. yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. You know, having to wear orange, you didn't have yeah. to wear orange. Yeah. You had uh-huh. all that time. And, Not and, to mention the other areas, the archery areas that look, were exclusive Mossy for archery. Oak was getting solid, and that was a big mm-hmm. thing. Boy, you could dress up. If you, now we had a bunch of that old, we, we had that old camouflage that looked like somebody fought in Desert <laughs> Storm. Army surplus. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's all I wore. Yeah, you Desert couldn't Storm, wear storm them hadn't happened out. yet. Yeah. <laughs> if you had matched camouflage, you yeah, a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's like a hutch bicycle. You know, I mean, they, you, you had one of them. That's man. what your that rich friends had. Right, your rich buddies had that mossy oak, but. Uh, but, but and that was, night of eagle too. That's right. Well, it, it, it was. <laughs> it was shot. just. It's just something about the archery. It, it, it's fun. It, it was a good. It's just, it's a different adventure. Don't you agree, yeah. Slade? Oh no doubt. And, and and you know, I I I do kind of. I don't I don't know what the word is. I probably did my son an injustice because because I I, I didn't teach him woodsmanship like I was taught. And like yeah. y'all was taught, yeah. But well, you we know, make it easier, and I yeah. think that's a lot of that is is just a byproduct of the things that we learn, right? The things that we do, even when we talk about setting up a property to increase the huntability of it, you take away the need for some of that. You know, it's I just a you. different. You know I what I mean? You. So yeah. it's different. No, no, that, know, we, that, it, that, it's that an sense. evolution, but yeah, yeah. You're yeah, making it's them, an evolution. You're you, making you, them come to this food that's plot. Right. You're making. That's them. right. Back then, what no food plots? No. You didn't Early plant 90s, a food plot. Late no. 80s? It wasn't no. no food plots. You didn't plant a food plot. It, you was hunting You didn't feed woods. corn either. No. no. It, that was a no no. You know? You <laughs> yeah. know, they always taught you don't feed corn and kill the deer. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and, and and we were so scared of them. It'll men. kill them, all right? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Now I'm thinking somebody <laughs> was like, them. Somebody yeah, was like, killed a bunch of them. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. it, it was a cool thing. And, and they hunted shady over, back then, though. Yeah, but I mean, I was. Sitting, finding white oaks, that was the thing to find. Man, yeah. it was. You find the rod oaks and. and, and find the one they're feeding you, under. Yeah, that's exactly right. But you always had that one man said, always put you some rocks in your pocket. Yeah, so you <laughs> You know, <laughs> so you throw your rock out, yeah. you throw your rock out. Anyway, right. you know, that was a big thing. Our yeah. persimmon tree. Yep. Yeah, you know, I used to look for persimmons. I've hunted Man. under persimmons. I've never drawn my bow back under a persimmon tree. But that I was used to hunt them and thought back I would in them be late in '80s, early '90s. Well, that was what you also look for. something. Dad and I hunted in McCool, Mississippi, and even up on Knoxby Refuge and water. Yeah. I can't tell the old farm ponds that little, would be in the little, middle. Yeah. At, well, there wasn't There's cutovers of them in the, at, at that time. time. There People wasn't no were such thing cut. as, 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 as cutovers. They wasn't clear cut. But my, my yeah. dad, growing up in Otala County, knew where every little half acre farm pond was. Water hole. And you was hoping it'd be dry. And man, you talking about fun now. You climbed up and you sitting over a little Catch farm a tree pond. on that ledge. And I mean, right. it's and just it's a low, trail yeah. all the way around it. And then you look up and one coming that man, corner. Man, I'm glad you said that. I forgot. I hadn't thought so about fun. that in a long time. It was time. so we used fun. To do that same How many people you water. know now? Because you can see all the tracks. Water. Remember all the tracks, yeah, tracks you can see everywhere. in that low pond? That's right. Man, I, I think most of the people I know right hunt that bag of corn. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm just saying. That's you know, it. I mean, it's well, that's, you that's, look, let's that's just say it like it is. Yep. That's Ryan Bostic, if you're watching, we're not trying to take away from your <laughs> no, business. No, we're, we're going to send some to you. Yeah, I've heard right. people come down there and buy some of that yeah, corn. I don't know. No doubt. Oh, it, it's it. It was just a way of life, and yeah. and people that start off bow hunting, and I don't bow hunt as much, but we started hunting in the Midwest up around Buffalo County, Wisconsin. So then hunting, you know, I've never been nowhere but Mississippi and Alabama mm-hmm. hunting in my life, mm-hmm. so go up there. Well, the only time you get to kill the big deer and the ruts during bow season. That's right. So That's right. you had to learn how to bow hunt <laughs> and be good at yeah. it. And that really you goes. want to be efficient. And that right. really goes with what this guy loves. And you start talking about elk. Yes. Oh, Especially man. that. that yeah. There's I mean, no other way you can hunt. Yeah. 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 I mean, but, that's can, a, 
Do you kill it's a lot of them with your The doors that bow hunting open. Yeah, how many have you killed with your bow, you I've think? killed 15 bulls and two cows wow. with my bow. This will be year 29. That's awesome. And I've, I've never hunted them any other way. I know we, we never yeah. have gun hunting. So them. they're bugling. And, oh, it's oh, always so. during the rut. September, yeah, I mean, I've been everywhere from September the 1st to the 24th. Where is your favorite place to go? Uh... I mean, I tell people I <laughs> he ain't gonna give up. Well, well no, tell me what. No, to say, I mean, I, you know? I mean, we've had great luck all over. Probably here recently, New Mexico has been really I good to us. We, that, we, we've yeah. been buying landowner tags, but I tell yeah. people I go to the west to be in the Rocky Mountains. I'm just fortunate, and I about get teared up. I'm just fortunate that the elk live there. Yes, and yeah. uh, spend that time with uh, with my dad. Right. Yeah, How old's your daddy uh, now? How old's your daddy? He's 74. 74. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I've, we'll post some links to your social mine, media. And, and I, I, follow, I follow you along. Yeah, and, my, and, my, and my, our, our last three cool. years I've I've got on YouTube. And, yeah. and I mean, not for any reason. That's the same thing I, I told Brent. I started YouTube is just for whenever I got grandkids. That's right. They, they go back and they, say, this they was know, my granddaddy. This is what we did. Yeah. And, and they'll know about yeah. my daddy. And, and that's the only well, reason I've, I've, I've nobody, nobody the people that don't know you out there, when I played against him, and, and I'm not going to say it, but, you know, we just had our 30-year reunion. Yeah. That's and and 30 wild, years, Slade was a catcher, and they had a great ball team. It was us and them, first and second yeah, district playoffs. Yeah. It was a fight. Yeah. And um, knew, knew most of the guys in there, played with them in college. and But Slade was one of those guys, when he caught, if you slacked, he'd beat you to first base <laughs> behind it. He's the only catcher with He's a competitor. And yeah, that's, yeah. That, that was his competitive yeah. edge. And it was and, and, and New Hope was like, look at him showboating. But it was how he was as a person. He was going to outwork your tail. Yeah. Watch him videos and, and when he's out what, west, elk hunter, turkey. Watch him turkey hunt videos. You know, he's still trying to beat that, people. Yeah, he's no, he's still beating you to first. Win. But yeah. that was you. Yeah. And, and and you yeah. you know Coach Smith you and Charles Coach and Hester was our coach and, it, yep. and let me tell you we had some battles down there yep. but good times but knowing a person and and he when he done his bows he was passionate he was a passionate person for what he does and I don't care what he's doing I don't care if he's baseballing I told him I said how's your rotator cut because he's got a son that plays ball yeah. and he followed him he said what do you mean I said because I know you've thrown five thousand pitches to him a bunch you of can't them. catch him yeah. but uh and and um. Uh, it's pretty neat to see here we are 33 years later down the road yeah, yeah. It's, it's well cool. and, and if and if it's cool i remember when i started at sports center i had a convenience store in louisville at that time and and a lot of people don't know this i had interviewed to go to work with primos and uh man you know tough. at that time i thought man that couldn't nothing be oh, better no doubt you know but You'd have been good at it. I am glad the Lord closed that door because I, I probably right. wouldn't have the wife and the two kids that I had. That's and, right. You know, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I sold my convenience store, and uh, somebody said, hey, you need to run up to start for there. Opened a sporting goods store. And I said, a sporting goods store? Like, a, and yeah, they're they looking for somebody to run the bow shop. I was like, that ain't going to make it. <laughs> you know, come yeah. on. I mean, you can't go do that. But I did. You Went up good there and rep yeah. met Mr. Randy Haynes. Right. And, uh, I mean, they they, they hi hired me, and as they say, the rest is history. But, you know, I've made so many great relationships, met so many people. And look I at mean, that networking that yeah, you look, use now. Shop, the bow shop in you the created equipment world over now. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you're now selling <laughs> big equipment, renting yep. big equipment. I mean, these are people that you – Sold a so, four or five hundred dollar boat. Yeah, too. I mean, boots. tighten the no, string. They, they, they didn't sell a four hey. or five hundred dollar boat. <laughs> well, it sounded good. Boots and jeans <laughs> and bullets <laughs> and guns just and relationships yeah, that's right. and networking. That's right. That's and I what try matters. to tell my kids all the time. I said, networking is everything. That's in where life. it's at in life. Yeah. Uh, but it's just a, uh, it, it's a cool thing. And, and you think about us, y'all. When we bow hunted in our nineties, you know, none of us didn't have any money. Had a little gas money, yeah. but going. And I remember shooting a, a spike with a bow. And it, it, I, it was unbelievable. The mm -hmm. feeling was just like, now I shot a mini and we couldn't find. Yeah. And and uh, <laughs> and I mentioned one little thing, Nick Teen and your daddy was yep, a pharmacist. Yep, sold now, it. Now, yeah. if you had that back in the day, a Nick Teen was a 
you'd have to explain what it was. We always called it poison. Poison pods. Poison well, pods. Now and, it's a scheduled four narcotics. So right. if you're buying it, <laughs> yeah. I hate to hurt your feelings. Don't it ain't the, it ain't real. Uh, the, them hot handcuffs don't feel yeah, good. Yeah, no. Ain't by, you know, but, but what it does is is relax the soft tissue. Made that deer lay down. Soft muscle. So it it relaxed heart. the heart and yeah. they just Bleed died hard. yeah you, you know but let me tell you uh, if you had some out in the 90s it was good just it get it in good. them get it in them yeah. it was good yeah you know and and i mean that was the, how ele- you know the y'all call us how things have evolved yeah it's been but i mean we didn't have we had them old big broadheads you remember right. them yeah, and i remember when the, when, when the muzzles first come heads. out thunderheads yeah. You know, with satellites. Yep. Satellites was a big one. But all right, Lost. so we say all Lost. that. But look, we yeah. say all that. But even today, and we're going to kind of step through some of the history and and, and the evolution of it. But right. even today, we're talking about those. We're referencing these old big broadheads. Mm-hmm. Well, you got a whole segment that are shooting traditional, and I mean, they're still shooting the big two blade. Two blades yep. have made yep. such a comeback. Oh, you look at what the huge. Ranch yep. Ferry and those guys yep. in public have had on. Where they they get back into these heavy loading arrows up, and there's. There's so many different, we, we touched on, and I think this is where we really hit our stride on this, is the hunting in general. Now, every, every, every segment of society, I guess, is like that. But for this, hunting in general, we always seem to look at and focus on what makes us different. And we always, there's, there's, the, there's the ongoing, the, you know, the, the traditional guys hate the compound guys. The guys shooting compounds hate, you know, the crossbows mm-hmm. aren't real archery. And, and the saddle guy but, don't like the tree stand yeah. guy. The tree stand guy don't like the, the, guy shooting, house. the shooting, shooting house, house guy. And, but let me tell you yeah. what we better do. We better, we do it all. better figure out where we all. A happy ground. Yes, sir. Got to. Yeah, common ground to. is, is look, I, I look at life so much different now. If you, if that's what you want to do. Do it. Right. That's what you so, want to do. Do it. Well, I, and, I so, but, all right. So, so having said that, let's run through some of that though, because there are very, there's differences. Yeah. So and so, I don't know what your preferences are, but you spent you set up thousands of bows, yep. sold thousands of bows, yep. and you you talked you talked to, it you talk to yeah. thousands of hunters who had 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 experience, anecdotal, and 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 probably some technical reasons why they chose a mechanical over a fix or vice sure. versa. What's what, well, I mean, we'll talk about the crossbow thing first. Uh, yeah, let's run through some of these things. Just, just, just we'll some lean of the on your expertise, quote Facts unquote, fishing, controversial yeah. things that yeah. that 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 we went through. You know, the 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 crossbow deal was a big deal because when I first started at Sports Center, uh, you had to be disabled, know, disabled or, or, or you had to have a doctor excuse i, yeah, I don't know whatever right, yeah. i don't, I, I yeah. don't know whatever yeah, way yeah, to put yeah. it yeah. Mm-hmm. you know so we didn't even stock a crossbow didn't even stock them right. and yeah, crossbow is something that, that you, your uncle order. you had an uncle yeah. or somebody that had a crossbow yeah. in, but it and, was in vietnam and <laughs> there were there were groups even here in mississippi that fought the compound thing so so hard the purest yeah, yeah, yeah. Pure the name or, of being a pure. Yeah, so whatever they way. are. Uh, and and I mean, you know, we're just against them, against them, against them. I never really understood why they were so hard against them. I really don't. And and this is why. Because you could cock it. Yeah. Well, and we go back to what I said earlier. I used to tell customers all the time, just because it's got a stock and a trigger, don't make it a a, a rifle. Just You're still string, shooting. Don't make it a bow. Yeah. Exactly. Well. <laughs> true but you're still shooting the era it's still archery and if you had never fooled with a crossbow they're the most cumbersome aggravating but you know what yeah you're right to the people fool i with. know that were and and i'm in some areas i have been somewhat of the purest i seem mm-hmm. to lean that way mm-hmm. whether it's turkey calling yep. or archery yep. the, the people that i know myself included that were kind of on that side kind of against it they would tell you and i would too that i love to shoot a crossbow like you know during guns what was your reasoning for for maybe not wanting them to be legal just that the the dedication the time investment the practice it took and the pride and that practice and, and that skill with a vertical bow. With a vertical bow vertical i mean bow. Yeah. if i'm being honest with i mean that's, probably, that's what it Tradition. is it's yeah. this is the way yeah. it is yeah. you're you can take that thing out of your closet and go climb a tree today and as long as you hadn't bumped the scope yeah, yeah, you're probably all right. I mean, so how did you feel when the black powder went to the 35 wheeling? Same thing. Same, same stuff. Yeah. So I wasn't a big muzzleloader guy, 
But yeah, I would have if I'm being yeah. honest about it. Yeah. I would have. Yeah. yeah. I, and, because but, I used to but ask the people same that way all I did the time. with a crossbow. I'd have got over it. Right. Yeah. I mean, but I'm gonna tell you, you're right about what you're saying, dying breed. We better start looking at opportunity. That's a fact. And yeah, get and these kids. And and and, got and, to. and look, if that little kid wants to go hunt with his daddy. He's not big enough to shoot a cro- a, a vertical bow. Yep. Guess yeah, what he can shoot? Aiden killed a ton of deer. I bet he with killed a 100 with a crossbow. Right. Think about a pop-up blind and crossbow. It got a lot of people in the woods that wouldn't have it a did. No doubt. It's, look, and, and, it's the same thing because if we – I'm a rehabilitated purist. Okay? Let me tell you, so that's why I'm playing a little bit of devil's advocate no, here. But let I'm, me tell you what. No, I mean, it's, I'm it's, making it's that good. point. Hell, if yeah. we lose the hunters in the young generation, then we're going to lose the voice – of well, all kind of different things. We're already losing them. Lost, Lost them. Hey, Lost them. And, and, and you know, people, people, you know, boycotting and, and, and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And, you know, we, we having different deals with deer. And, and we don't want you to hunt. It don't look good. It's not, you know, because people put stuff out yeah. on social. Y'all both social media guys. You can put the wrong stuff on social media. Sure, yep. sure. Uh, you shoot a deer with a bow, he's going to bleed. Yeah, we got to realize all that kind of stuff is. We got to get a little smarter. We and, are the you minority. Know, like we, there, ain't there, no if, doubt, if you man. step out of here, look, I, you you travel outside of the rural South, and I know there's hunting all over the country, but you go to a big city, and this is foreign to, yeah, to sure. a lot I of society. Agree. You know, and, and I'm I not, agree. you know, they're not all weirdos or extremists. Just yeah. normal people living the yeah. life. Yeah. And it's a different they lifestyle. They just, they just don't get it. I, we, I, we I need to focus more them. on yeah, sure. the things yeah. we have and, in common. And, and, and we see more people now moving in and out of of our region industry. They don't look at it the same. You know, I can remember going to going to Orlando, Florida, turkey mm-hmm. hunting. We wearing camouflage. We walk up in a junior food store, and a girl said, "What y'all hunting on them big snakes?" You know, just she didn't, didn't have, have a clue. clue. They was no. turkeys, and we That's just right. killed one. That's right. Quarter mile up the road. Yeah, she well, thought we was over hunting pythons. Well, I mean, and, you know, and, it's just they don't understand. Um, the you know, I started this with with archery's dying, and 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 I should have. This will be something good for you to follow up with because I, 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 you're good at that. I don't even – I just guarantee you you're good at it. NASP, the Nas- National Archery in the Schools Program, mm-hmm. I mean, is one of the biggest growing – I mean, it's probably not growing now like it was, but let's say seven or eight years ago, NASP was huge. At Sports Center and at Owens, we stocked the little Matthews Genesis bows. Yeah. I sold hundreds of them to kids. Hundreds of them kids that would have never kids got exposed. That to would have never done it. School. Okay, yeah. Th- this this is what I want you to figure out. Because if you do, we can all be rich. Hundreds of thousands of kids across the United States that participated in the National Archery in the Schools program. Four H. Four H. They come in. They would come to Owens. They'd come to Sports Center. They would buy that little bow, shoot with their fingers, loved it, and when they were done, they laid it down. You know how many of those archers came back and bought hunting bows at 15, 16, 17 years old? How many? You never saw them. Yeah. So it's funny you so, say that. So yeah. where are they going? Is it parents? Is it the Mississippi Game and Fish? I, I wouldn't say where. I, so, where are those athletes? So I daughter, call them athletes. Yeah. Where, where, where are so they? So my daughter. Always hunted with me, Kate. Mm-hmm. She's the one who killed that, that big deer right there. And and she loves it. But I got her in the 4-H shooting bows. So I got her a bow. She shot. She won district one yep. time, 4-H. Had a blast. And, and and then here comes boys and right. ball and yeah. life. And, and, and she set it down. Now she's 18, fixing to be 19. She picked it back up and started shooting it because I had one of those bows that you could – you could uh that had all the adjustments. Yeah, that's the right. Adjustment. That's right. Nineteen to thirty hoy, inches hoy, of draw, hoy, twenty hoy. to seventy pounds. Everybody yeah, makes right. one. So she starts shooting and she said, Daddy, I want a deer hunt. Mm-hmm. So now think about it. She was shooting when she was twelve. Yeah. And for loved five, it. For, loved it. For five years, she didn't pick it up. Mm-hmm. But I never got rid of it. Now she wants to go this year and I'm Start gonna let and and now I'm so nervous. I'd I'd climb sixty five feet now. I'm so nervous her get ten foot off the ground. <laughs> right. I can't stand it. But and that's another she thing. She wants evolved to too, do safe. it, and she's shooting her bow. And I said, "There's only one way I'm gonna let you. 
you practice it. Every practice, day. Practice, practice. Because wounded, you get to wounded animals. Yeah. Look, how many that's deer have we Oh, you're going to lose them. But that's them. funny you said that because she she put that boat out five, six yeah, years. Yeah, I just always, I, I, I but never she could never figure quit out. Hunting, yeah, but she never quit right. She picked up the rifle. and I just never could figure yeah. out where the where the, yeah, where there, the disconnect was. There's a disconnect was. somewhere in there. I mean, because I, I was in the heyday of Sports Center. I mean, we, we were. I was selling five hundred bows a year every year. Five hundred bows. That's a lot. And but and and I, I'm talking about that's five hundred big boy bows. Yeah, so how, how do we keep them engaged? Right. You know. Right. We, right. We, well, where do we? But yeah. look at me, and, and I'll tell you on my personal. Brent bow hunts all the time. Shoots, likes it. What kind when of bow you shoot? Quit, Honey mask. I'm still shooting. I'm still shooting that Z7. You were. Oh, on. you really? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I got a, it. It's hard for me to believe it's yeah. that old, but it's. I lost more old. bow sales to the Z7 than anything else. I had the because guys like Brent like wouldn't Brent. get rid yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't get rid of them. Look, I finally I had adrenaline before that, and it's all I finally let it go, yeah. and I, it was the same way. I hated to. But I said it. It's like this, Slade. I set it down myself. Brent, how many times have I bow hunted with you in the last ten years? Zero. Zero. But and and I went two or three years ago. Someone asked me wanted to go. It was a client, and so I took my bow out, shot a little bit, and. Target went sit and stand, mm-hmm. shot a doe, and loved it. But I didn't do it. But I'm telling you, I'm going to do it this year. Obviously, I've made my mind up. That's what I want to do. And um, no, look, as, wants as, to go. as hunting opportunities, hunting goes. As as we do the things that we talk about on on, on not you know just, not just on these episodes, but in our day to day life, we're we're fixing properties up. We're making them more huntable. We're we're doing the things that improve the huntability of a property it effectively gets easier just to go kill a deer. Right. And so like every other sport, you know, look, more people fly fish now. Fly fishing is big because it's a challenge. We inherently so, want a challenge, and bow so hunting is where, is where you can get it. It has gotten easier, but I'm going to be devil's advocate here, okay? So when, when I was coming up with Dad, being a pharmacist, working in a bow shop, he knew my dad's 75 now. At that time, he was 45. He knew every 75-year-old landowner in five counties. Okay, That had a little spot of land. Well, if Phil Fancher wanted to take Slade and Lee bow hunting, turkey hunting, whatever, we went we, – yeah, we, Access is different. We went bow hunting, okay? Ownership. But, but for different. me, yeah. that has changed. Yeah. Yeah. I, we never was a member of a club. Didn't have to. Really? Because Dad knew – private land. Dad owners. knew everybody. Yeah. Never, never bought a lot of property. wasn't any need to. Yeah. We always had a place to hunt. Now it's done made yeah, full circle. Is Let me ask you this: if Don't you have do, it. You got a good memory. How many of those places growing up have been clear cut? No, oh, my God, it was all virgin hardwood. Oh, it's right. divided between oh, and, and that's but, right. But, Generations, but, but would you say seventy five percent of it that you hunted has been cut or more or more? Yeah, or more, and it's it's all pine timber. Yes, it's pine plantations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and 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 so. For me, and, and I, I'm not saying we were lazy by not going out and buying property or this, that, and other, but it just it to. just never was something no, we had to. to do. Now it's made full circle. My son wouldn't have killed deer if it hadn't have been for my customers. Correct. So yeah. for 15 years, when it, we were in our heyday and Aiden was killing deer, I didn't have to go get in a hunting club. Right. Because he's done out of that go. kid status yeah. now, but I could call old Chris and say, hey, yeah. Uh, man, you I got a place you know, where we go. Go. Yeah. yeah, bring that boy yeah. on. Yeah, so it's just but that's a, changed. And, and yeah. I'm gonna tell you, land. When we talk about land, since that's what you do, but land <coughs> has changed with with the clear cut and the pine plantations, bow hunting. Yeah, the landscape. In the general, landscape yeah. in general. That's right. It, it, and and now you talking about scouting? Mm. Then you got to go on a pine plantation, and you sitting there in a uniform. Yeah, right. a bunch of trees. Nothing. You're just looking, yeah. and you're hoping it uses that trail. That's, That's right. one that it's illegal to do, but maybe a pile of corn ends up somewhere within 25 right. steps. But right. I'm just saying, not being funny about that, but. You well, that's one of the have, reasons. You so don't we... have that. And, and a lot of people, you, Brian, I'm going to tell you something. You too, Slay. A lot of those people don't have any bottomland hardwoods that's right. to hang a stand in so then that's what you become 
a guy sitting in a shooting house, looking sitting on a road, on a looking road. on a green field. That's right. And that's all you got. And, and, and look, that's just part of it. How many people you know that can go find white oak acres and kill a deer under right now? They ain't a bunch. There's not a bunch left. They ain't. And and uh, now we talk talking about the timber business. To throw into that, when white oak become more valuable than red oak, pine, and everything put together, mm-hmm. guess what people did? They cut, cut them. Granddaddy wouldn't have never cut it. Nice he grew right. up on it. His daddy left it to him. Yeah. That third generation we talk about, when those third generation get it, <laughs> they don't care anything about it. Yeah. They may one of them may live in another town, one of them yeah. may live here. They divide that place up. What's the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna cut, cut timber it. and divide the land and sell or it. sell it. And that's just that's just life. That's just what it yeah. goes. And we gotta hope that our children, if we do have a place, don't do it. But when you're dead, how are you gonna control it? No, you you know, that's just part of it. You know, that's just part of the the change, and that's the value. You were talking about the evolving. Mm-hmm. Land use has evolved. People didn't, back in the day, when you were doing all that hunting, the timber wasn't bringing much money. So people didn't look at it as a cash cow. Yeah. Now we flood them with, hey, fast-growing pines, cut them this many times, 30 years, where a it. white oak takes 75 to 100 years to get to where we want it to be. Wow. Okay. All right. So now we got a pine tree that we plant in 30 years. It's done. Yeah, you mm. can do two. You can do it twice in the life of that white oak. Yep. So that's the difference. And, you know, and, and I think, you know, does that cause a lot of people that get out of hunting and start Is, fishing? That's why. Start because yeah, that's, that's why. That's right. That's right. They they lose their places because yep. look. Another that's thing, why I don't bow hunt as Slade, much. You know this to. just from people you've been around. And me and Brent, we did a podcast on it, but. The hunting clubs are a dying breed. The yeah, old-fashioned old really? hunting, the old-fashioned yeah, the, hunting clubs the, the, stay yeah, at the camps. Yeah, that's right. Camp. That's right. Well, they're a dying breed. Yeah. Because we're always on the run. Well, yeah. and you know that yeah. goes back to the, you know, you don't have as many of those just large tracts yeah. of, of land. That, so if you notice people that don't go up north and hunt, you you go to mm-hmm. the Midwest and hunting. You know, a lot of that hardwood's never clear cut. No. It's it's always left the same it's always there so that's why the bow hunting is so easy to pattern deer look at deer you know and, yeah. and uh it's it's you know it's something it, it, it's a difference in it that's what makes us boys uh, from the south so good when we go up to the I, was, I was gonna say because look, we grew up look, hunting. You're right yeah and a, and a lot of people that bow hunt so so taking the point we just made about the change in landscape access changes i think all of that along with the internet and along with the convenience of a cell phone and onyx all that has sort of perpetuated the traveling hunter mm-hmm. you know you can get out and go so if you go to the midwest most of sort of like elk the the time of year when you want to be up there hunting whether it's early season or yep. rut it's most of, for the most part it'll be archery only yep. That's uh, right. a lot of the, a lot of ground right. is archery only anyway regardless right. of the timing That's right. so it That's opens up that that bow being a bow hunter you get more time and you get more access you get access to land too so there's another well, one of those good reasons to bow you hunt. know ted nugent talks about it all the time the mystical flight of the era i mean it's just it's nothing there's something fundamentally there. i just, ain't no doubt if you had a target out there right now we should like we're carnivores bows, and like know, there's something and about you draw that. that bow back yep. and you anchor up and you shoot in that era and i don't know what it is i the, the last five or six elk i've i've killed and, and i don't I don't know why. Was it like slow motion? Oh man! I mean, I, I got, I got, I got chill bumps when that bow goes off. It's just like, you know. Right. And then when it hits them, it's gone, and everything. It's then goes everything back to goes, yeah, yeah right. nine hundred miles yeah. an hour. Yeah. And there, and you can't do that with a rifle. It's it, it's funny know? how quick that flight is, but the thing, you're, you're, the way you're, where your mind goes is, I've released it. I can't get it back. You think a lot of thoughts it's from the time amazing. that release goes Ain't off. No and something it's running 350 the, foot a second. Yeah. It's amazing it like what the good Lord, yeah. what our brains will. Yeah. But yeah, that's right. Slow how quick. Uh, how much you can process It'll in that slow little it down. Yeah. 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 But you know, mine, and I guess there's other people out there, but my <clears throat> memory of bow hunting and bow hunting and loving it is sitting in those woods and those deer having to come to me. Come to see Like our old turkey hunt. Like when yeah, we used to have to call them at 25 yards yeah, or 30 right. yards. We didn't yeah. shoot we them at 80. We still do that, man. Yeah. That's still our game. 
Well, that's right. But anyway, I'll, I'll make shoot one at fifty. But uh, <laughs> it's it's a uh, well, it's, it, yeah. They shot it's, one one morning. We're yeah, looking. Come at, on, bro. We were looking at two turkeys, <laughs> yeah. and just all of a sudden, boom! I was like, God, yeah, he said, well, I can't I wait think for I you to that. shoot. I yeah, said, I ain't thought about shooting. Well, well look, I want. He melted nuggets. that turkey down too, mm-hmm. man. But um, just sitting in those woods, seeing it, and, and that's an experience that I want. Marley Kate, much of my daughter, yeah. and and I want her to experience that. Yeah, sitting in that tree. You and, need to experience. Yeah. I think I, it's easy to sit back and say what every hunter ought to experience, but the the successes are great, but just the work, the effort, because you're gonna go a lot. It's kind of like turkey. You're gonna go a lot. You and, and your buddies yeah, yeah, and come back. That's what made it. You're gonna have a lot of failures. You're gonna have a lot of failures. Oh, you lot of failures. Here's, you know, it's the, disheartening to shoot a big gonna, deer. You're gonna lose some. Yeah. <laughs> to shoot a big deer with a bow and can't find it. That's another thing that turns you off. Sickening. Because me having a deer plant. How many calls you yeah. think we get? Man, we just shot one crease. We're looking for it. We'll call you. Yeah. yeah. Nah. So but look that look the the, so the if rise of the the blood tracking dog. Yes. Now that's a ticket. Now, yeah. old Bart, he'd be yeah. one to get on the thing. But that was a great podcast too. Y- you I think guess. about, you think about the, uh, and I'll just tell you from a deer standpoint. For every thousand deer we get with a gun during gun season, we may get fifty. That's what I was going to say. I wonder what the so, percentages so, are. Yeah, well, look, so most hundred processor business, hundred, hundred and twenty right? with a bow versus. 2500 with a gun with a gun so that all right, so that, that all right so now yeah I mean, that's it, a, that's really that's out there but i think that also goes to the guy that bow hunts it's not easy he's not looking to take the easy way he's more meticulous about a lot of things how many of those guys are doing their own deer or they're doing they're not uh, so no, i mean you think I'm about the deer you, process i'm gonna say it and i think you'll agree with me early not, season and i want look, you to, it's I want seven you o'clock to, before it gets dark yeah, it's I want later you to tell me we do we're busier in our lives today with our kids well i saw and it we're doing all this look in the 90s that's true my daddy what we wouldn't run and travel how, ball we how many times here. you ever hear your parents say i'm busy back when we were coming up right they didn't say it no they didn't and, say and, it and and i've got that phone just like you do stuck to my ear 80 percent of the time yeah, of my life right. and 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 I, and it's not just but i've got something to do all the time well, guess what? Guess what gets put second? You, in your mind, you say, I, I'll go with a rifle. I'll go with... And the best, some of the best hunting... And I, and I listen, I have never killed a buck on this place with a bow and arrow. And have that's you shame on me. Yeah. Yep. All well. the deer you're looking at in here, but that's shame on me yeah. because I didn't make time to do it. Well, but, I, And look, we can go to all kind of things because, you know, you, look, you're really sensitive to pressure in the woods there's a lot of things you do around that 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 and and uh, and in fairness bow hunting the way i love to bow hunt it has has some pressure to you you know what i mean like that's if you shoot one yeah you're in and out i saw it in the in the numbers so much like i said i you know i went from selling 500 bows a year in one market to the last three years at owens which would have been 12 years removed to selling 150 bows Man. in the same market yeah that's a big swing and the people I mean, know you they know oh you. i mean yeah, if anything thing. that should continue right. to grow yeah yeah but because your your customer base gets bigger because i sell you a bow and you tell your buddy but i mean I'm i don't think i've bought a new bow since 2009 yep it I mean, when it well, died, there's a problem right there yeah what do you think, Slay? What do you think was the, the fall of, of, of the Well, I, I mean, and, and I've heard my dad say this a bunch. When the, so back in the 90s, early to late 90s, even in the 2000s, the 3D was huge. 3D archery was huge. Yeah. You could go to Grenada and shoot this weekend, Carthage shoot this next weekend. You could go to Louisville out at Camp Palila and shoot – this weekend, you could go to Forest and shoot. You could go to McCool and shoot. You could go to Kaiserisco and shoot. So it was a lot. Of I places mean, it was shoot. every single weekend, and they had Sardis. the they, they they had the No Miss Association. I don't remember what it stood for, but I mean, North three, Miss, was that North Mississippi? North Mississippi, it? yeah. So three yeah. D archery was, was, it was huge, a big thing. And, and and it was kind of like when I was playing softball when I got done playing baseball. I mean, my dad was on the phone. You know, the phone hangs on the wall. 
You know? That's right. I mean, you know, dialing it up, calling his buddies, hey, we're going to go shoot here this weekend, here this weekend. Archery was booming. Jason Golden at Lakeway Archery in the right. 90s was big deal yeah, well, in Columbus, it was deal. hook and bullet hook and, and bullet was, jason and was all. selling 1500 to 2000 bows a year i know for a fact but it's sharps i yeah. mean it was a big deal and, and and then like we do as good old humans people get lazy these the, these archery clubs it takes a lot of work to put out 25 targets in 90 degrees yeah. and take up 25 targets and drive the rebar. I mean, because I, I heard Dad talking about it. So this club, this club closed, and this club closed, and this club closed. And then I think that's when that's when most people that I talk to the older guys, and, and I think maybe Brian Montgomery, Steve Brown would probably tell you the same thing, that that's when you really started seeing the the, the downfall. The and, drop and, off and, on and the hunting archery. side, too. I yeah, mean, oh, yeah, yeah, because, you know, people just wasn't doing it. They, when I know, was doing it a lot, that off season, so right now, we're, we're recording right this now, in mid June. Saturday. Right yeah. now yes, was sir. a lot of fun, a lot of the shooting. Yes, sir. And we hunted, but the summer, Man. like right this time Every of year, week, we you were tuning a lot. Were as soon as turkey over. season was over, you started going to archery tournaments. And and we shot all the way up until almost time to go elk hunting. I mean, you was ready to go. Yeah. Man, by the time it got time to go elk yeah. hunting. Did you shoot been, you shoot a lighter setup and all that when you were shooting? No. I, I you try I, to keep pretty close to your I hunting? I kind of stayed with the uh, I Because there's hunting division. I, I can yeah. remember there were hunting yeah. division. There yeah. were pro divisions in that, in that competitive. I, I everything. Guys yeah. shooting long. Long stabilizers. Long stabilizers. Short, back stabilizers, tension releases. Movable sights. Uh, I mean, V bars, not, not. So V-bars. think about how much of that, and you know, we set out. We're going to talk about sort of the evolution, and, the, and mm-hmm. think about how much of the 3D or the competitive archery is now in hunting. Guys oh, are shooting back there. tension. Guys are shooting the, yep. the sights. Yep. Think about the was that HHA made that first single pin that Mover. was adjustable yep. sight. You know, yep. I, and I never went to that. I liked having four or five pins. I'm a pins guy. I like pins. I always, I, you know, 20, 30, 40, you still 50, like and pins. I'm okay. a pins you could, guy. I could compensate between them yes. if I had to. I was a pin counter and I could shoot the guy. That gap. was me. Yep. And, and, you know, I sold probably more once the, once the one pin movers really got People popular. had a little tape with the with yeah. the yardage mark on They'd sold, have to move it. No doubt. I sold more one pins than I did anything else. But the guys, the younger people, is the ones that really started using them because they could uh they could multifunction better they could use that range finder they could dial that side i didn't think i'd ever then, then you I had to remember to dial it. it and hunt and rut you know, you know it, it 40 turns into 20 yeah, like that no, and i didn't want to I, me either i could change pins without i have learned to use a range finder a little bit and then count pins but I just, you know we judge distance i, I like at picking it. the trees Did you still it. like you, pick, you, you knew but I mean, and that changed big time. The 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 fall away rest. I was always a whisker biscuit guy. I told mm-hmm. Brent I took more ribbon. People, you know, for whatever reason, people would would come in the bow shop and everybody wanted to see the bow guy's bow. Yeah. You know, hey man, well, yeah. I'm, what do you hey, shoot? What do you shoot? Yeah. You know. Well, whatever I need to sell the most does what I shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, you know, I would reach up there and get my bow and, and I'd have a whisker biscuit on it. And they're like, right. what? Why, why don't you you're not shooting you a follow shooting away the QAD? yeah you know why don't you shoot it's so much faster i said how much faster uh and uh so they say well i mean <laughs> i mean <laughs> they'd be like the the fall away is a lot faster three feet a second yeah just three that 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 less friction three feet now, a second i like the drop away if a fella torques some you know when, yeah. when you when you when you let when you let go and that once that <laughs> released once the rest drops, it's not affecting the aero flight anymore. Well, so, if so, you torque, so here's here's what makes. And now I'm taking a chance, challenging the bow yeah, guy, here, and that's yeah, what so, I'm doing. I, so, I want us to talk. So about I'm glad you brought that this. up. So here's what makes a set of prongs, yeah, okay, and a whisker biscuit the most accurate rest out there. Okay, the most accurate. Uh, an era. When it leaves the rest or leaves the bowstring, y'all y'all have seen all the slow motion videos. I mean that arrow goes yeah, doing this. Flex, yeah. It is cutting up, okay? That arrow, the reason all your tournament guys still shoot on a set of lizard tongues mm-hmm. 
and is because that's that two prongs. That's two I mean, well, yeah. yeah, but now it's a it's a solid deal, and it's split, and they, and they call it a lizard tongue. That era has to have something to help stabilize it. Okay, when it leaves the string and that fall away rest is gone, nothing's there to help it stabilize it. That lizard tongue or that whisker biscuit is still there to help stabilize. That air is trying to find its center. Okay, that's always a good trying point, to find man. its yeah, center. That's counter to my so, logic. But so if you brought your bow in here and says, "Man, slave, my bow just won't shoot." Won't I had, tune. Had people say that all the time. Yeah. My bow won't shoot. Well, what do you mean it won't shoot? I drop back, pull a trigger. That sucker's gonna shoot. You know, well, I mean, it. I can't get it to paper tune. Oh, here we go. We're going to get know. on paper tune, yeah. too. I, I, mean, I want to hear the bow the, guy. The, 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 the paper tune in rack. Now that you're not selling tune yeah. ups. It is a great place to start, but I always wish I never had it in there. You know, the, the, the paper tune you can chase rat it a lot. Is, is good when I'm in there by myself. But if you bring your bow and you're standing right here over my right shoulder and that air won't paper tune, it's a nightmare. Gotcha. Okay. I can take that follow away rest. I did it 150,000 times. I would unbolt your follow away rest, leave it served in the down cable. It'd be hanging there, okay? I'd open my drawer that had everything in it i'd grab me guys a never biscuit. knew you you molested yeah. their bow like yeah. that did they? <laughs> i'd grab me a whisker biscuit i'd slap it on there i'd take that bow i'd look at it this way i'd look at it this way i'd set it on my knee i'd put that string three quarters over on the on the riser i'd look at it up there look down the end of that yeah, shaft matthew's got that line like line of grip and i'd and tighten it up and i'd walk down there to that paper tune rack i'd draw back boom, it like you shot a 22 rifle through it and i'd say here you go I did it a bunch after I got a little cocky, you know, after, especially my, my, my last three or four years, because you just chased it to the nth degree. Once, once YouTube and social media come along and, and everybody thought they were a bow mechanic and I, and I'd say, Hey, you can put that rest back on there if you want to, but that dude right there will he's, shoot. He's going to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. It will shoot. Right. And uh, it's not as aesthetically pleasing. That's the reason everybody, most guys that wanted that follow away rest, because it looked better. If well, you ask them why. And the whisker biscuit came on the bow on the rack. Yeah, it, So that, right. that was I mean, kind of like buying a combo. Take it off. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You, you know, and they'd be, just well, felt like just an upgrade. Look good. That like, QAD man. with the it fit looked so oh, good on that was, Matthews. Yeah, I mean, it was, was a, it was an 18 yeah. set of inch set of chrome rims. It just it right. looked good on there. Yeah. And, and that's why most guys want it. But you it's could, hard to beat from a hunting situation, reliability that whisker biscuit. It was going to be there. And I'd shoot a set of prongs because there's nothing more, no more accurate than that. But that's in a hunting situation. That's, yeah. that's tough. You bounce it off. Or, yeah, darn. Oh, yeah. Boing, on. You trying to get it right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But, I mean, that, that's, that's the, that was the one, two things. The fall away rest, the movable sight, and then all the different release aids and you got to tie your loop this way, and you got to tie your loop this way. The knot's got to be on this side of the string, and blah blah right. blah. I'm just yeah. and, and well, then you and that's most that's people can't shoot you, that good, and that's before you even right. get into arrows. Oh my gosh! And the different spines and yeah. all the different veins and the and you looking in when we started. You remember them big eastern airs? That'd be that big around. Oh, yeah. them them <laughs> orange easterns. Yeah, I mean, was, it, was it called like a six oh six or oh, something? <laughs> It was a big old wheel. Yeah, 31, 17 yeah, 30, yeah, and all 31, that. Yeah. 24, yeah. 14s. I mean, there yeah. just wasn't. And, and now your tournament Look, guys I read, are shooting I, I, that big fat aluminum shaft. That's right. And they'll explode. You know? I saw yep. one guy doing a, <coughs> shooting a back tension. I want to say it was Skipper Booth. We were talking about him earlier. And had that sucker go off and hit the gravel in the parking lot. And that went arrow everywhere. just like shattered. And then, you know, and, and then probably the, the, the next most question I, I got asked other than what setup did I use was broadheads. Errors were pretty important. Most guys with errors, I found, bought Came what they about could speed. Well, yeah, or, there's that. I, I mean, you know. So everybody now is Rage, right? Rage is a big uh, I mean, deal. yeah, Rage was a big, big broadhead. Those but big but old, Yeah, that's 20 years ago. You think you say now, you know, yeah. that's a long Rage yeah, came out. I, been around I, I remember time. shooting them and uh, – I used to love that Grim Reaper yep. mechanical. Yeah. That was I over the top still, mechanical. I mean, they're pretty. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. still. That was killed a, a pilot. Here that was a violent. Yeah, I killed a pilot. Here and and Awful the benefit, holes. the benefit to that mechanical, from it's my tuning. standpoint as a hunter, was it shot just like yep. that field tip. Right. You didn't have to. Right. I remember what we always called muzzy tuning. 
Yep. So and and you tell me you can tell me if this is a myth or not. We'll play MythBusters, but you know you could get your arrow. Let's say you had your bow tuned, mm-hmm. it's shooting good enough. You, you're shooting yep. paper. Well, when you, you screw on those muzzies, take the field tip off and screw on the muzzies, they would they would drift. Oh, that's a so they would s- drift. But what I always heard, you don't don't chase that with your sight. You chase it with your wrist. Well, so <sighs> just counterintuitive. Yeah. You think you're taking it out of tune. So but it, it worked. Well, this is what I took. So first of all, muzzies come six to a pack at that that time, and and my dad was a big spin checker. And you bought a pack of six, and two spun good, and four didn't. If them four don't spin good, they not going to shoot good. Really? Now, what was they, it they called? Just, did, did you uh, – what was it called when you set them opposite or you set them with your flex? Well, the people – Because there was two different yeah, trains people, of thought there. People have, have, have done it all, all kind of different ways. But when you screwed that muzzy on the end of that – that air and you spun that muzzy and and you know you would you'd put it right here and draw you put your little black dot on something and if that broad head went around that circle you buys prop that sucker in the corner it ain't no good really will not yeah. shoot because the weight's not right straight. on it well it's just it's just not just straight. not straight at that that aluminum if that tip barrel is, if that tip was moving just not all. straight wow That's but wobbly. as 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 we got better and people's manufacturing was were better, then that don't hold true now. I mean, these no wonder I, mean, I didn't shoot good with muzzies. Well, they're indexing. That's what yeah, I was thinking about yeah. all the arrow index. I mean, you buy head. a pack of three now. Some of these broadhead companies are two hundred dollars for three. Now they'll spend like a now. they'll spend like a rocket. <laughs> well, I mean, the, you, you, the guy you just talked about over in Texas, what's his name? That uh, some controversial. Yeah. yeah, his broadheads are. 180 bucks Hot dog. wow for three i'm thinking back in my day i shot too many deer to pay that, that yeah, look i would reuse them all too yeah. but i had, had to look the first thing had a, look when we shot wet first thing wet we, rock at the house yeah. first thing we up. did was run out and look at the air make sure we didn't yeah <laughs> yeah jam it. that know, was that. a bad thing about that shoulder shot yeah. you knew you're gonna break you an arrow breaking air man but so the so where broadheads have 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 come now everybody makes really 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 good broadheads and, and it was the same way about bows guys used to come in the shop all the time and oh you're just that matthews guy or you know or this that and other and, and i worked on for 15 years every bow imaginable Mate. everybody's top end bow is a is a good bow what it come down mm. to to me is stuff that was simple that was the one thing about the matthews they didn't change a lot they were always simple they were always easy. They didn't get out of time either. That no. solo cam design, and you didn't have time. Their customer either. service was impeccable. You couldn't beat them. Other companies, I, I carried every other bow line it, it was. And the one reason we always would get rid of a bow line is because you couldn't get parts or their customer service sucked or you couldn't get their rep on the phone. Right. Or it was just issues all yeah. the time. Problems. And, and when you're selling stuff, you, yeah, that you, matters. You, you, you can have that Cadillac well, product, but you're yeah, the you man. Slade set it up. It ain't working right. You're the one I'm. I'm, the I'm one going you're to go see Slade. Yeah. yeah. Like, when they walk in, they ain't ask for little Jimmy with yeah. them high top shoes no. on. Yeah, and they like and, you. <laughs> and you know, Matthews yeah, had right. that mission line too. To me, that oh, was one of so that good. was a, that to me yeah, was, was a so good thing too. That at more of an entry level economically. When they come out with that switchback, you know, that was a big thing. Yeah, switchback and switchback XT. You know, that that was kind of their first really big bow. And then they went to the adrenaline, which did unbelievable. Then they had a couple of bows that did good. And then the Z7 uh, was just a phenomenal How are these bows? So these new bows, they're real short. When I go in and look at them, I can't get over that short brace height. How little being they accurate yeah. and forgiving. You know, well, I mean, they got I, such a short. Yeah, I mean, but they're you know six and a half inches of brace height. But here's where they get the accuracy. Okay, I, and I, God, I wish we'd have brought bows. So got one in the closet somewhere. So uh, I think my my one there. So let's 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 take a MQ1 for for instance. Old okay? school Matthews. Yeah. Every everybody knows the M, MQ1. Okay, it was a at that time a thirty inch axle to axle bow. Which was short. That was short then, yeah. Super 34 short. Thirty-four was sort of normal then. Right. I think. So the the riser on that MQ one was really short, and then the limbs yep. went here. You had the thirty-inch axle axle bow. Okay. The the their switchback was the. But okay. let's 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 jump all the way up to their newest bow. Their newest bow is the lift. 
30 inches axle to axle. The riser is longer it's like 20 something than 20. the axle to axle because the the limbs come off at such a 45 okay if i got a screwdriver this long or a screwdriver this long which one is more torquey the short screwdriver yeah. so, so you okay. get your forgiveness you get the out shootability of the, out, out of the length, of the length. That. so that's what's made these short brace height bows so accurate is because the risers and have, that have, short have brace height so is where you're getting the extra speed, speed because yeah, you're because forcing the, the arrow falls. with the string travel. So all my life, neat. I hadn't thought about Slate, that. Don't it makes sense. All my life, I've heard speed, speed. You know, mm -hmm. used to it was 250 foot a second. Then it was 300. Then if you shot 325, yep. what is the what? What is your cake on speed? What do you think? Well, I got this from my dad, and, and it ain't. I mean, I I believe it. Optimal aeroflight with a fixed blade broadhead, anything over about 270 feet a second, you're going to have... It's you, flying. You, well, you, you you can just have a little problem. Now, some of these sure enough bow tuners, I'm going to be honest, I, I never was a just a great bow tuner, in my opinion, because I, I maybe wasn't as... Uh, but you killed a lot of animals. And yeah, but I mean. <clears throat> this is the last seven years i've shot 50 pounds 50 pound bows that's all i've pound shot pool. 50 pound used to we was young oh, 80 90 pounds yeah. you know but you the, get the energy so the last eight bull elk i've killed I well, made, a 50 pound bow so well i'm i'm been tell you, you ain't gonna believe it but <laughs> you go watch my videos the bull i killed last year at 34 steps with 47 pounds and i'm telling you a draw melted through him wow melted through That's now amazing. my my air is 400 and about 45 50 grains you know it, a little heavy but some yeah. of these dudes are shooting 600 grain shafts yeah. uh y'all losing me well so um, i was gonna say so he's talking like weight he's now. talking weight now but so you ask about speed to me it was always this speed and mass gets you energy that's right. So you got to have speed to Matt force that. You, 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 you load it up, yeah. you, you get more energy. You can you can li go lighter on the mass, on the weight, and you're going to get a lot more speed, but you're sacrificing energy. Yep. So it's give and take. It, there's it's And it, it's just hard. I always – it's hard to make a fixed-blade broadhead fly at 350 feet a second. It just is. That's the reason the expandable – got so popular is because all these bows were 320 30 40 50 feet a second and you'd you'd go to a bow shop outside of maybe where we were and and that guy would just hand you a pack of rages because he knew they would shoot uh at those speeds yeah uh and and to, to well, shoot and a fixed blade broadhead at those speeds you need to be able to tune a bow a little bit yeah uh you're gonna have to tinker with and the and the fixed blade if you're going to shoot the lighter poundage, the fixed blade is better because you're not sacrificing oh, energy to open the yeah, blade. Yeah, to open the blade. And, you, and really, yep. a lot of the, yep. a lot of the problems yep. I saw flying with people. Flying funny when if it blades flying. Well, a lot, no, of, a lot just, of problems I saw with people that didn't, that had bad experience with mechanicals, they were shooting too light a poundage. Yeah, so like, you, so. You, you got to have enough energy. So me at 47 pounds, I, I couldn't shoot an expandable because when that air and broadhead hits that animal, then it takes a lot of energy to make that broad head to open. To pull it back. Yeah. Gotcha. So, you know, I have to shoot a fixed blade. Yeah. But I, I've always been a fixed blade guy. a traditional shoot a two Do blade you, where it cuts on contact. So, to answer the question out there for the <coughs> listeners, do you like fast or? Accurate. Accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I want both. that joke. I take C, both. Yeah. Well, you shot 800 pound, <laughs> eight or thousand pound, Elk elk with, with a 47 with, pound right. uh, my little girl's shooting 47 pounds yeah. right now the 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 last here i can that that's can, that's, can that's really you. neat i tell you what's neat you know, that's, and, neat, and, and, that's and, neat that you're shooting that little <laughs> of pound i tell you what to give you an appreciation some of the equipment is a little bit aged but if you read chuck adams book life at full draw oh i love man it. that dude gets love deep well, what do you what do what you shoot you shoot pretty heavy <laughs> well no i shoot so that that z7 i usually back it down to 60 pounds pound. pound. no pound. it's okay. 70 pound limbs so, i usually shoot 60 i back it down to 60 2017 is when i started shooting a 50 pound bow 
Wow. Yeah. And I've killed a bull in 17, 17 18, 19, 17. 20. But that 50 21, pound bow will smoke that 80 pound bow back in the but 80s. That, that, that piercing oh, yeah. spoiler. If I want to shoot that, him in the eyeball, I want to shoot him in the eyeball. All my buddies got piercing spoilers for Christmas, and my old lips just. Just back in the back in the fall and, back and in Christmas eighty three. If you remember, that Pearson spoiler came with a crosshair. That's right. Sight. Sight on it. It was yeah. green. Loved it. And, and man, it was great. But look, you could thump it, or when you pulling up with your pull rope and hate it on a tree. Night night, it break it, off every time. Every time. And look, remember you the, try to glue. I worked on so many of them. Look out there at New Hope, we didn't have no bow shop, so we was out there super gluing that thing. We couldn't ever <laughs> hey, look, we may try to find a sponsor. If anybody can send us a picture or something on social media, tag us if you shoot uh, a pendulum uh, sight. Oh, oh yeah. I, man! We try to remember the. I still had them in my. I still had them in my bow drawer there bear. at the store. Yeah, yeah. I want to know bear bow. Yeah. I remember them pendulums. Swinging but pendulum. If you get up high, it swung down. Pendulums got to where they wouldn't work because they stick. because well bow speeds got so fast. Yeah, that it you. that it you know it, it just you know like at thirty yards it'd be sitting here at twenty it'd be sitting here but it got to be where there wasn't enough gap between here and here and they just. They just shoot them up. Were kind of yeah. obsolete. They were obsolete. But man, I, we I I worked on set and and that was something else. I worked on so many old boats. You can't imagine all the old boats. People and, wouldn't. People but, would let them go. No, but I enjoyed that. Well, and, it was like and, a something. And that was something else about Indian. Matthews. It didn't matter what bow you had. If it was a Matthews, it sure didn't matter. Matthews had parts all the way back to when they built the first one What'd in nineteen ninety two. Nine, nine, wow. My brother is an old bow junkie. Mm-hmm. He'll come home with one from a pawn shop. He's got a Matthews FX. He's got a Q2, I think. Well, he can still get day. brand new limbs, brand new riser, brand well, new Well, he camera. bought it at a yes, pawn sir. shop and replaced the limbs. He, he? Yeah, he's, he's basically yep. got a brand new Wow. You can still FX. get every bit of it for him. Yeah. That's where every I got the old Night Eagle was pawn shop, city yep. pawn down on, on – on the eighty two. Pawned it off. No, oh, I swear I bought it. Oh yes, it that. that's where you bought yeah. it. That's where you bought Look, it. When you when you was pouring that concrete back in the day, we didn't have no big paycheck. Uh-uh. So that hundred and fifty dollar old Nada bow was a good one, you know. And uh But yeah, broadheads and then What do you think, Slade from your experience your experience guy, you 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 love a you <coughs> you get into a hunt and, and you're passionate about it. What do you think? Telling these people, we got listeners that don't mm. bow hunt. It's mm. never bow hunted. To get them in it, what what are they? What do you think to tell them? Hey, this is why I love it. This is why. So, yeah. So, me what you think? What's your, well, what's your vision on it? Well, I'll talk about that, and and then because a, a lot of people misconception that you got to go spend two thousand dollars to get a good bow. That's a good and, point. And and and, and be you don't because that is that. all I hear is a nine hundred dollar no. bear boat. So so yeah. so so archery. This, this is what I would tell everybody that that's listening. And, and I used to tell people this: it is the cheapest shooting sport out there. If you're a pistol guy, go buy you a bow. If you're a rifleman, people used to think because I worked in a bow shop. Well, you don't gun hunt. I, I, I ain't nothing like two hundred and fifty yards. <laughs> And shooting one, and that yeah. sun gonna melt. I love it. Sure. I mean, I want the first thing hit the ground is the nose. Right. Shoot him up high in the shoulder. I love it. But if you are a shooter, go buy you a bow because it is it's so enjoyable. And, and the reason I say that is the cheapest shooting sport it is because you go get your bullets and yep. you shoot them again. Yeah. That's what I was you you say. can't get that three hundred wind mag or that nine millimeter right. every time you, you pull that back. trigger. It costs it's you done. money. Yeah. Now you have an initial expense of buying a bow. But a fella right now can take five hundred dollars. Okay. Seriously, five hundred dollars. Yeah, and, and I, I'm gonna just talk about Matthews because that's what I know. Sure. You can go buy the Matthews Mission Hammer, okay, for three hundred and thirty nine dollars. That's nineteen to thirty inches of draw, twenty to seventy pounds. You can put you a, a whisker biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> Fifty dollar whisker biscuit on it. So we're at we're at three seventy nine. You can put you a honest to goodness. You can buy a true glow sight right now for forty true bucks. Glow. I shoot for, true glow for sights on my Z7. So we're at four twenty. You may spend a little more than five hundred. Four pin. I got a four yeah. pin. Get true you glow. a half a dozen airs. Buy you a thirty dollar bag case. target, and and you're in the game. And go shoot. Yeah. Six hundred bucks. Six hundred yeah. bucks. And and if you do it, you it it. it 
they're just not anything any more enjoyable. You know, people talk about now how stressed they are and how busy they are. Get you a bow. It's fun. Look, it's cathartic. It, it's and nice. You shoot that you bow. Fifteen, twenty minutes shooting every day, that, and go Watching inside. That arrow flight. Yep. yep. Go inside. I mean, it, it's it's therapeutic. Right. Uh, so if you're not a bow, and, and you don't have to be a bow hunter. And my guy. Just be an archer. And, and look, when guy, you start getting that improvement, too, in accuracy. And here's that's another thing. That's, that's, that's if a, you love to addictive. sit on a green field mm-hmm. and watch deer come in, which is most of the people that's going to be listening to this podcast are, are those guys that, that yep. do that. But to have that deer come within oh, 25, man. 30 yards. And it just so and not get a look, shot at yeah. it, right? And and him and he live another day. That's right. And your next angle, all right? He went to this tree to feed. Let me go over here. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you let something. Me, let me tell you something. It'll and, make and you then, a lot better gun hunter too. It will. It'll make and you then, a better deer hunter. Yep. The pressure situations, and I go back to sitting in those woods like turkey hunting. Mm-hmm. My favorite time of turkey hunt is not when I pull the trigger. Is it that break of daylight and all the woods are just quiet? Yeah, that's right. And then he fires off. Yeah. That to me is the reason you do it. That that, ma- yeah. that makes me. That, yeah. That's you know, I hear yeah. Will Primos talk you about You hear them footsteps in the hey, leaves right, right after sunset when you're you know, hunting, uh, hunting that hot white oak. And I love to watch Primos. You used to talk about you yeah. Primos. They're my favorite. Well, we guys. grew up on them. I love them. You know? I love to watch yeah. them. I watch the back ones. One thing great about you two. Is you can go, go watch, watch their old That's right. That's and, right. And, but, but, All those true series. But what are so he good. says, and Will sits there and he says, you know, the beauty of that turkey, of that deer mm. coming. Listen, that that's the game. Yeah. That's the game that that's everybody what makes it. needs to play. Yep. Whether you shoot them, now, now look, I'll blow one down in the green field. They ain't nothing like it's fun it. to have them between. Yeah. It, look, but it, you, you know, get seven and, and, or eight deer. Oh, on, you on, on, the, same, on the same white oak with you. Move. Or, yeah, I mean, you know, it's um, and that's the only reason I've been successful out west. Uh, it's because your expense is here, not because of my gear or anything. It's just because I was a bow hunter. And taking when that pressure. When I was a young Handling guy. that pressure. Yes, sir. Making that shot right. I was a bow hunter. You know. I look up, Matt. I mean, that bull this year, I mean, once I realized he was coming, I, I mean, he was at 70 yards like like that. And when he got to 40. Yeah. He's a like, real he's patient in guy. He's a patient guy. You know, you know, you know I'm hard. real nervous until they get to where I'm. And it's all business. And then I'm like, yeah. yeah something clicked. He, he's in. Yeah. I got chill bumps. He's in yeah. bad trouble. Right. And once he come inside 40 yards and I knew the angles were good, at at 50 pounds, angles are everything with me. Yeah. You know, everything. Yeah. You know, uh, 20 years ago when I shot a bull, I, I mean, if he was 40 yards and quarter to me a little bit, didn't bother me a whole lot, I'd move in front of that shoulder right. a little bit. And shoot it away. Shoot deep. heavy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it didn't really matter. But now angles are everything, especially on, a, on an animal that big. So not to jump to something negative, but we got to talk about it. The negative part that I hear from bow hunters is stands, safety. You know, you had a brother fall. Yeah. That part is dangerous to a lot of people. Yeah, and and, and you, don't you agree, Brent? I mean, there, there's you definitely falls. a serious safety aspect of it. it. You got to take serious and be yeah. conscious and, about and it. Wear shoot, a harness. You, I know you wear a harness. Do you wear it every time, most time? No. Yeah, I agree because it's I terrible. Do. I know. Yeah. I mean, I had one, I, one of my best I friends' dad raised, fell out yeah. of a tree. And I can't. Died. Raised, you know? We were raised. What happened, to my brother? I can't yeah. leave him ground that one. We yeah. were raised to never wear a harness. Yeah. I you remember just, going up a tree. Yeah, I didn't in a tree lounge. Well, you didn't didn't even, didn't even have them, didn't we? If they were, there's like a box the of bread. It's going to hurt you worse. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I'd go 35, 40 foot in a tree, and that wind would blow. Yeah. And, and you never even thought about it. Yeah. And I, how many times we've got out one of them amicers and, and move your feet, and the whole bottom goes yeah. to the bottom I didn't do it, but I had my son wear one every time. But I day. wouldn't let my daughter go up in the thing without it. No. Yeah. No, I, I, I keep on look. I, I think a lot more of them yeah. than I did myself. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no. well, look, we all, you, you know, you, you're an athlete. You know how to handle yourself. Yeah. You think you, if something happens, you got it under control when you, you don't. don't. Yeah. That, that's you a, don't. It's, it's that's a gone. myth. That is not true. That's no. a fallacy. When and, you fall, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's and, it's and over it's a, before it's you a, know what happened. Yeah. It, 
So, all right, so you talk about it. challenges or drawbacks, whatever, whatever we want to call it, how we want to frame it. It's hot. It's late. You're hunting October and so October. So you hunt at 7 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah, it's late. If it yeah. gets dark, if you shoot deer at last light, yep. then you give it a little time to lay down. You're going to be 9 o'clock getting back yeah, to trouble a lot of times. So, if yeah. you shoot one, yeah. But you're not in it because it's easy. No. Guys, I mean, no. you know, the That's whole right. the, kind of the way we framed it is me it's a being challenge. A, me being a deer manager and me growing them, I have come to this conclusion. I start spotting these cats during October. Early. Soybeans. Yeah. I start spotting these big deer. I may mm-hmm. not kill them till later. Yeah. But I spot them and find them September and October. Mm-hmm. What, happened, cameras. what happened a couple of years ago with neighbors that bow hunt? That's right. And it just, and a, a lot of, big of times. Deer got killed, killed in bow season. Yeah. Two of them. Lost two. And and were they living on me? 100%. One of them had 10 acres, nothing. Right on the line. Yeah, now they didn't do anything wrong. No, but it's just no, the point. no, They were both taking advantage of that early. So that's they were right. taking advantage of the opportunity. Op- first, here's how I answered it. He said, what do you think about that? I said, they was out there hunting. I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. So bow hunting. that's the thing. Could I could have killed the deer? I don't know. Maybe. But I sure couldn't have killed it in that truck. No, nah, sitting at the house. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. And it's just that's that they made the time and they put the effort in. But you get to kill these deer when they're Damn. together. They're, and they are a food. different animal. They are. Then. They're a hundred percent on animal. food. Yep. They're a hundred percent, and you can get by more during both season. You can first of deer season. I'm just telling you, they now we can hunt them just, in velvet. I right. say they we got sure that enough velvet, different got that velvet. And, and I'm flipping a coin on yeah, that I, one. That, yeah. I ain't, I'm. I'm, I'm not I, look, I don't. There's nothing biological, but it's just it's it's yeah. a good I mean, way to sell it, license. Pretty and, pretty mounts. I mean, it's a beautiful deer killed in velvet. Um, but it's they just a, a uh, <laughs> you know, we've had several people on here, Brandon, big bow hunters. Her camp, guy, yeah. yeah. And those guys are, are, but, but you know what? The guys that kill these big deer, you better open your eyes and watch them. Yeah. See what they're doing. See what they're doing. We'll go back yeah. to that velvet hunt for a yeah. second. There's no way you can do a one weekend velvet season and not expect people to shoot every one of those deer over a pile of corn. Oh, that's for sure. You know what I mean? So, I, I mean, unless they got a kudzu <laughs> patch, they hunt unless, somewhere. Unless something. you had some beans, you know, I got I three. Shot take video off in one kudzu section. patch. I got but three you know, good buddies yeah. that are game wardens, but I, I'm gonna say if I had to flip a coin, yeah, yeah. there was a camera and a yeah. pile of corn involved. Yeah, come on now. And, I mean, uh, but look, I'm not knocking it. No, it is what it is. It, is. it don't matter to me. Look, you, more and more, we we've, we've kind of hinted around a lot, and this will get. Well, this may be a whole another podcast. That's how you kill big deer now. Yep. I mean, that's, that's the game. So, so They're it's, slaved it's, to their so belly it's, it's, until the All right, let me starts. say this. You it's finding yeah. that big deer. It's patterning that big deer with that camera, and then it's not messing it up, yeah. using the you know access and wind, that's all right. those things. You don't blow yeah. them out, but, I mean, that's that's how you kill yeah. big deer. Well, they're going to go. They're going to go to two things. They're going to go away from two things. They're going to go to two things. They're going to go to non-pressure, and they're going to go to food. Mm-hmm. And if you've got non-pressure and food, you got them. Your 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 rate, yeah, is and that up. and that may and, be another and, good place to start laying know, the plane. The other thing about bow season, you're putting a little pressure in the woods. Well, you're walking. You know, you're you're, it's, yeah. you're doing you know, your you're you're making noises. And let me tell y'all something. But they're that's not, part of the enjoyment. That's why you got the place. Foolish. Yeah. If they're not foolish, but. You can get away with a little more, yeah, don't you think, Slade? Yeah, you they're get not away. Near, they're not as skittish. They're not as leery. Because they look, they not. haven't heard. They haven't heard little Tony over there on that four wheeler yeah, with that muffler. That's right. And then and then uh, what do you call it with the the things? Well, yeah, they they're not hearing all the clanking. They're not hearing the. They not smelling all. They're the not stuff hearing that they somebody smell. snorkel kids. The snorkel yeah, kids. Yeah. <laughs> they're not seeing all that. They're not hearing all that. Yeah. So you sliding in and you sliding out. It ain't no different. You cruising a track of timber, walking up on one and jumping him out. Well. He don't know. But now you jump him out two times in a row. I'll go back to this, what we were talking about earlier, about the about the white oak trees. I can't tell you how many times me and my dad would leave the our Jeep. My, my dad was a big Jeep guy. I had a 1978. Right. I graduated, okay. had a 1981 CJ7. Okay. We would leave that Jeep, both of us with tree stands on our back, holding our bows, Hit the swamp. Didn't know where we were going. Knew it was about time for the white oaks to be dropping. 
we go to this set, nothing. This set, Different nothing. This chestnuts. set, nothing. This yeah. set, nothing. This Looking set, ah, there's a few acres. And dropping. Yeah. Sweating. Yeah. Bullets. And then all of a sudden, dropping. we'd find some. If I, find, I used to find, if you find the, the, the white oak or the tree with the acres yep. and it had droppings had under, droppings under you it. You had the hot Scouting spot. With, the, yep. with, the, with the tree stand on our back. All right, you climb right here. I'm going to climb right here. or And you go to the so-and-so hole and look right. at those and look at those and yeah. then i'd find some and and, and we climb. that was your first time in yeah. there and that always was always best the best time yep. first time you know? was always. and me and him were gonna kill deer that first time every time. single time how many people you know now is gonna put a tree stand on their back and go scout well how many people knows what a swamp chestnut is oh, not many As, and you know they're the first you know that yeah, yeah. people y'all don't quit, know it y'all it's quit a, cutting them it's a i know <laughs> november the 10th they quit was making always, whiskey barrels out of them people are quit yeah, cutting them yeah. but november it, the 10th was yeah. always a, a big that magical that was time what you like yeah. you know you, you the, the swamp chestnuts are it's a white oak family but they're the big ones big ones yeah people call them cow oaks but you know hey if you find them holes big jagged oh, leaf and had that jagged that, leaf, that leaf and them the, droppings let me tell you something out. you get up there and, and how <laughs> yeah. how a deer would would <laughs> hey with no jaw <laughs> with no top teeth how in yeah. the heck are they cutting they cut oh. them big acres oh I've yeah. watched them eat them and old holes fall out of their mouth yeah. and yeah. reach and get them another right. one. And as soon as she put that head down, that's my window. <laughs> that's like, yeah. uh-oh. But you know, that's that experience, y'all. Shoot that, this far over. <laughs> that's experience that people listening to this podcast will never. Don't witness. understand it. No. Well, they just won't witness it because no. there we go back again. It takes 75 years we to grow that it. tree. We and don't we're not mad. Look, There's some of them. Don't don't. I've y'all cut go out thousands. There get you a buy you a bow and go hit some public land. Go find one. I've there, probably cut twenty thousand acres of land in my life. You know how I many white oak trees I've planted? None. <laughs> Zero. Zero. Uh, maybe two thousand <coughs> acres. We mix some in. You have a yeah. mix in, but but really, I mean that's the thing. It's really weird. And, oh, am I doing an injustice? I don't know. But there again, it's it's all about the economics at the time. You know, growing, you know, 75. We don't have 75 years. No. You know, if we do, we're going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. Did we but teach anybody anything? I think so. I think so. I think it's a good podcast. And I mean, I, you know, I would like to do a couple of more on it, you know, because yeah. we. Well, I mean, bow hunting is it's just, we've you all. Turkey hunt with your bow? We've, we've all no. witnessed different aspects that archery, yeah. bow hunting. I want to talk about bow setups next next time. And yeah. Just, you know what? Why I think this works? Why I think yeah. this this bow and this arrow setup? I mean, you can go. Shoot, down I would have asked you a question, but I didn't want to put you. But it's sad. It, it is. It is a dying. But holes. I agree what you're saying. Me looking at it from a deer processing standpoint, mm-hmm. there's some factors out there that's causing it. Oh, I know, no we doubt. named them. I mean, we named a lot of them busy and. In life, but but look, I, w- I guess we're gonna have to fold back and say, you know what? I want to be, I want to try, I want to see this experience, whether I do it or not. Was it? it would you is, say? And and I, I keep on rambling. Wrap it up at some point. But I think about those early two thousands. Pike County, Illinois, oh, yeah. those hunting shows, Hadley Creek, you know, all yeah. of the, the, oh, the yeah. this explosion of the yeah. Midwest. Yeah. Would you say that's probably about that peak about the time and hey, that, that yeah. but really the a peak reason, of, of archery? Yeah. The reason they were doing it because they could hunt the rut with a bow, with a bow and you right. couldn't do it with yeah. a gun. Yeah. Right. Because well, let me tell you something. Step further, the reason they're doing it is because they can make money. You hunt a yeah. bow, you hunt the rut, and it's nothing like a hunting in a good place in the Midwest during the rut. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, it's so yeah. intense. So yeah. intense but, compared but it's so to our rut. Because two weeks after that season, you wouldn't even see a deer. No. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know as a deer there, except all the sign that you see. You know, so it's wild. It's a, it's a different people chasing seasons. Yeah. So I want to. I want to. I. I would really like to get back together. I'd like to talk about both setups. I was going to say. I want to listen. Let's do that. We want both setups. I want to hear. We could bring a bow in. So both setups. I had so many questions about bow targets. What do I need as a bow target? I could talk thirty minutes on the different kind of bow targets prices do well, i need a 3d target do i need a bag can i shoot my broadheads in here's this what i one? want you to do I want you to write that down yep. you think about it no i'm serious yeah. you think about it what we'll do we'll set up a couple minis and we'll we'll meet and you go over this you go over that because let yep. me tell you some people we you know we do a lot of food plot stuff you mm-hmm. listen to it but i go over spraying with them yep. and, and brent says chris i get more things on spraying rates how much 
Bows are same way. Oh, no I doubt. want to learn because I ain't well, done it so long. I, you know. I want to get into the accessories. Why I like this site. Quivers. I, I got so many things I, I want to. I got that. Man, I, I got a raggedy quiver. I got so I, many I get things so I want to tell when people I realize the arrows fell out of my quiver. I, I mean, got I got to buy a new quiver. Before I mean, I, I, I want to talk to people. Yeah, about, I, because about, you know it. You know quivers. the you. This was your life yep. for twenty years. I used years. to run a backpack quiver for years. Did a you? Cat quiver. Yeah. Remember cat? Dad uses a hip quiver. Yeah. You yeah. know, but but there's you know. Let's do that. Bro. Yeah, let's yeah. Get we're going we're going we're going to bring Slade back in for a few more. Well, Slade, before yeah. we we'll do better leave, than that. Let, let's talk next about time kind of the tiny land management, and timber management. Your new job you got now? Yeah, working yeah, for. Yeah, plug what you get. So I went to work with doing? Taylor's Taylor Taylor Machine Works. Right. I mean, everybody Absolutely. knows I wore red because Taylor's is the big red forklift, you know. Uh, but then Taylor's about two years ago. What what people don't know under the Taylor group of companies, and y'all may not even know this under the umbrella. There's Taylor Machine Works. There's TLR, which is Taylor Leasing and Rental. Right. There's Taylor Logistics. They right. own their own logistics company. Right. That they move stuff all over the sure. world. Right. There's Taylor Defense. Right. Uh, Taylor's has a huge Taylor Defense contract. Yeah, they just they, built a new place out yeah. here on our Taylor Turbur. Right. So the that's the, lift, the right? well that now they're the they're, 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 the, they're the little yard dogs that move the that containers move the stuff. around. Okay. 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 Then they got Taylor Power. Uh, they have generator, Taylor. Big yep, they got generators run That's a whole awesome. town. So what Taylor are you? SSI, Southern Service Incorporated. We have 427 servicemen. Wow. Look, I didn't know that. Cat, John Deere, right. they ain't got the service guys like we right. have service. Uh, what are have you Taylor working Tool now, what Supply. Are you now, I'm with Taylor Construction Equipment. Right. So it's about two years old. Well, I know of about four big timber projects, wildlife projects, that you rented them. <sighs> Equipment, equipment yeah by yeah, the so month and and we're and I the, mean, that's, a, that's a cool we're thing the hyundai dealer you know whether it be mini x's all the way up to the to your large i saw y'all put one on a buddy thousand pound crawler. cotton top yeah yeah i, I sold no cotton I, top i, he, cotton top I can tell you this he knows how to run it yeah for sure uh hyundai wheel loaders excavators the bale articulating dump trucks that's the big dump truck yeah, right big ones yeah. 20 30 40 50 and 60 ton dump trucks sakai your your big sakai rollers okay uh your falcon and those guys sure sure uh, yeah phillips they yeah. They, mm-hmm. they use sakai right uh fecon dealer uh, okay, we'll, mulchers, we'll, we'll, yep. mulcher stuff. And huh? then we're also the SMI crushing and screening. If you if you, if if you got concrete a bunch crushing of concrete or gravel that, crushing, that needs crushing. Okay. y'all yeah. lease and rent mulchers. Oh yeah, so yeah. You go with your habitat so guys, you think you about habitat. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. Skid now's steer. the time. Sure. Yeah. I mean, sure. now's the time. Yeah. Now they can. Hyundai has a skid steer that that we, that we got fecon mulchers right. on. Yeah. Great. There you I go. tell you what, it that gets you. You know, you buy the piece of property. We need to get back and talk about that someday. Yes. That's yeah, the you know? thing. That's a big thing on, on clearing and doing food plots yep. and yep. stuff. Uh, and y'all made some. You know, y'all was doing some major stuff in Knoxby County. Yep. Some different things. And, it uh, did over there. That, yeah, that's a, a pretty. Yeah. That's a pretty sharp. You know, that's a pretty sharp business. Yeah. To have and to have that resource that you could, you know, if you're a good, pretty good operator and, you know, right. got the well, insurance. Well, it's, it's really good. easy to do business with us. I, 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 all I know is what I hear from other customers about right. rates and sure they add this and that. But Taylor Construction really easy to do business with. Well, I mean, they've been you, there a long time. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, can they, tell you that. They got the customer yeah. service stuff figured yeah, out. That's so. awesome. Man, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about it. And I know you, uh, you, 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 you pretty optimistic about everything yeah, so yeah, that's it's, great it's, man. It's, it's been good i enjoy doing this well when you're a hustler yeah. it, it fits yeah, right in right. you know it pays that, the bills it pays the bills that's <laughs> right and then we got to talk about some elk hunting yeah, yeah. we've we got to do an elk yeah. podcast well, Brent, I, what i would really look, like we, to look, do we'll there, do that we'll hit another we'll hit one on social media i would we like talk, to have that, that bow, bow, that bow, bow the impact. would be good because you take a guy like me i bow hunted for 30 years but the last five six years i've been out of touch with it yeah you know, I, I, I mean, we can do a couple there, and then I I, I want y'all to cool. come to come to Dad's shop. I like where it. where we've got forty elk hanging in there. That'd be cool, and and just uh, so we can drool over them. Uh, no, but just just I mean, we can talk about things, but man, in the seventies and eighties, yeah. didn't he speak at the Bow Hunters Association? Yeah, yeah. Can, awesome. uh, but, but just a couple years ago, you know, pick his brain. Um, uh, well, he's still bow hunting at his age. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. He's a that's awesome dad and, and i'll say this without reservation and he'll probably watch this 
he shoots his bow every single day. That's unbelievable. That's awesome. Every day. He's 74, and he shoots his bow every single day. He's nice. he's He's got a place fixed up. We need to do a little video. Right. It's about from here to that Lysol container, maybe a little bit further. It's inside, in, in his house, in his little bow shop. He's got the coolest little bow shop. And he shoots. And it. he stands right there. And he shoots his bow. And, and I've heard him say this so much. You can practice outside. Everybody needs to practice outside. But the one thing you got to practice and be great at is executing the shot. That Going over your routine, shot routine that in your mind. Doing the same thing and every And then time. executing the shot. So yeah. you can do it from here to the Indian just as well as you can do it yeah. at 40 yards. Right. Right. But if you get to where you can do it from here to there, you're going to do it out there. Yeah, that's good. And, cool. and, and so that's it just becomes stuff. second yeah. nature. You that's don't right. have to, you don't have to constantly think about it. All right, so, let's wrap cool. it up. That's great. Uh, thank you. Slay, thank you for coming on. That's a fun one. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you coming in. Yep, thank Not, you all. We'll see you all on the next one. Thank you.